Hey everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Throwback Thursday. Today we are opening a box of 2006 tops and maybe looking for a legendary rookie card. The rookie card of Alex Gordon. Of course, we'll talk a little bit about that story in a little bit. Uh, first, let's tell you who's got this box today. This is for Camille. Camille is a Patreon member. If you'd like to sponsor a video like this one or participate in any of our case breaks, which by the way... We have a break tomorrow. Friday morning, we'll be waiting for Top Series 2 to drop on Target's website. Hopefully it drops. We'll see. As we wait, I'll be opening some Hobby and Jumbos in a random team break. And I think there's two spots left in the Jumbo break for that. We also have another break coming up on Wednesday next week. It'll be Select Baseball. And then I think next Friday, Stadium Club from 2021 comes out. So lots of uh, opportunities for all of you guys that like to uh, participate in the break. Just check us out on Patreon. It's $3 per month. And higher tiers get monthly packs and boxes sent. So let's take a look. There's 36 packs, 10 cards per pack. And I don't think there's any guarantee of an autograph or anything like that in here. So I don't know if we'll find a hit, but uh, we shall see. Let's, let's get right into this and get this started. There's 329 cards in Series 1 and 330 cards in series two so why is there a one card difference well when i first saw that on the checklist i thought well that's probably just because they still had number seven retired card number seven as you know there were some years tops just didn't even include that card in their checklist to kind of uh kind of like a shout out to mickey mantle but card number seven is indeed in the checklist in fact mickey mantle is on the box along with barry bond so we hopefully we can find the mickey mantle in here but it all comes down to a card, card number, what is it here? Card number 297. It's the Alex Gordon rookie card that is not supposed to exist. And um, let's see what we have here. Something going on here coming up. Here's our design. Lots. What, what's with all the team cards? Wow, this is the worst pack ever. So we start off with the worst pack I've ever seen in my entire life. One, two, three, four, five, six... Six team cards in a row. You get a top to all-star card. Seven team cards. So seven out of the ten cards in this hobby pack are team cards. Which, as you know, if you've watched any of my breaks on Series 2 or Series 1, or for that matter, I dislike the team cards. I think they're kind of a waste. That pack was awful. It's almost, to me, like getting a checklist. Nothing really crazy. At least there's a Vladimir Guerrero Sr. in there. There's Corey Patterson. Greg Maddox, kind of near the end of his career, back with the Cubbies there. And we have an insert card coming up. It's a Hobby Masters featuring Randy Johnson, again, at the end of his career in a Yankees uniform. So that's a kind of a cool one. Hobby Masters is an insert. So let me see if I can figure out what the odds are of finding one of these. Um, let's see here. Hobby Masters, Hobby Masters. I see Barry Bonds has a chase of 215. Uh, or not 215, 2715. Hopefully we can find some of those. The odds of finding these were 1 in 18 packs. We might find another one of these since there are 36 packs. So a nice one right there. Randy Johnson for Camille. And that's all in that pack. There's BJ Ryan. So the Alex Gordon card has the rookie card logo on there. And on the front of the box, they advertise the new rookie card logo design, I guess. And uh, Tops had just reached a new agreement, just had a new contract with Major League Baseball. And as part of that contract, they are not allowed, and that contract is still to effect to this day, they're not allowed to print any player on a Topps card that has not already appeared uh, in the game for the previous season. There's Barry Bonds, Homer in History, card number two, or, I guess, uh, what's this? Barry Bonds, for a second I thought that meant walk, 672. I was like, why are they celebrating his walks? Barry Bonds, home run number 672. Off of Casey Daigle, kind of a cool thing right there. There's a Rich Hill rookie card. He's actually still around. Andy Pettit. And we have an error card right here. Let's take a look at this. Do you see the error card? It says Pete McCannon. Yeah, that's Lloyd McClendon. That's not Pete McClendon. Uh, that's not Pete McCannon. But anyway, back to the story about Tomps and their rookie cards. So they're not allowed to print anybody that hasn't already appeared in the major leagues the previous year. So, for example, I'm not going to see like Wander Franco or Jared Kelnick. Um, appearing in any cards until they've already come up. So that's why we're waiting on them. There's a Mickey Mantle home run number one. Some team cards here. And Mike Lowell. So what happened in 2006 is Alex Gordon was a top-rated phenom, top draft pick. And uh, top's 
printed him in the set as card number 297. And they started printing all the cards. They were all ready to go. And then word got out that they were in violation of their contract. And the executives of Tops flipped out. So they hastily tried to destroy all of the Alex Gordon cards. Here's a nice Declaration of Independence uh, insert card. And so what they did, I guess, was they got the uncut sheets with Alex Gordon. Because as you know, these come in large uncut sheets. I think there's like 132 cards on a sheet or something like that. You've probably seen me um, buy a couple of those uncut sheets a couple different times. I bought them at flea markets. I bought a 1990 Topps uncut sheet set. And uh, most recently when I was in Florida in March, I picked up an uncut set of 1985 Topps. There's a nice Mickey Mantle. That's the card that I was hoping we would find. For Camille, there's the back of the card. Mickey Mantle, of course, uh, left the Topps um, company, at least his estate did. And his own was his rights were owned by Panini for many years, but he's back now. It was actually a super, super, super short print of Mickey Mantle in Top Series 2, worth like thousands of dollars. But anyway, back to that. So, what they did um, with the uncut sheets was they stacked them all up and they just took a like a giant hole punch and punched out Alex Gordon's face to <laughs> ruin the card. So if we do pull an Alex Gordon, it's likely that all of this is going to be missing. It's all going to be a negative space. There's going to be a big hole right in the middle of it with um, maybe just a little bit of the the border. There's a Francisco Liriano rookie card. I always liked him. Um... So if we find that one, that's cool. That's worth a little bit of money. But the big money card is the Alex Gordon with his face that is not punched out. What's with all these team cards again? It's like eight team cards again. There's a Barry Bonds. That's just the way I guess they're collated in there. There were several uh, Alex Gordon cards that did make it out. Just as a regular card with his face. You could probably find them on eBay. I think a PSA 10 is worth a couple thousand dollars of that card because of its rarity so they made it out in walmart blaster boxes and i guess they were um kind of clustered in the wichita kansas area so one collector went around to every walmart and bought all of the blaster boxes and i think he kind of cornered the market on it um kind of a smart move i guess but kind of like uh, reminds me of the no name on front frank thomas which is supposedly only let out in Michigan. There's a Roger Clemens. He is a seven-time Cy Young Award winner, but not a Hall of Famer. So I don't know if we're going to find that cutout card today. We might, we might, we might not. We'll see. There's a Barry Bonds uh, Home Run History card number 666, which was off of David Wells, Noah Lowry, and Chris DeMaria is the last one. So that's the best rookie card in this set, the Alex Gordon, if we can find it. The other ones in here, as you've seen, We've got like um, Rich Hill, not too bad, Francisco Liriano. Those are guys that have had nice careers, but there's not any big money card besides the Alex Gordon. There's Ricky Weeks, Mariano Rivera. That's a nice card right there. I love that card. Mariano Rivera, one of my favorites of all time. The Mickey Mantle home run card number one. I'm sure putting that card in here a bunch. And Tom Gorzolani rookie card. I used to be a big fan of that one. There's Julian Tavares. That player, I should say, Tom Gorzolani, used to pitch for the Pirates in the mid-2000s. And um, I actually gave him a gift one time. I used to, uh, you guys know I collect baseball cards. I used to collect Dave Matthews Band concerts. I used to have thousands of them because they would let their fans record the shows and then could freely trade them. There's a C.J. Wilson rookie card right there, and that's a gold card. Not too bad. C.J. Wilson had a, a couple nice good years. Got himself a nice contract with the Los Angeles Angels. Didn't really work out for him there, as you Angels fans probably know all too well. Vernon Wells. There's Matt Clement. We've got Brian Jordan, former football player and baseball player. Jose Reyes. I wonder when we're going to have another two-sport star that can do it both. We may have had a shot with Kyler Murray, but he's, uh, he's going to be all football, it looks like. I'm sure it'll happen again. Probably the most famous was Bo Jackson and Deion Sanders back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. You guys remember those guys if you're around my age. Uh, Mark Teixeira was a nice one. Jimmy Rollins was a nice player at this time. John Smoltz, Hall of Famer right there. Another Barry Bonds card, card number 689 or home run number 689. 688, sorry, kind of tough to tell. It's kind of cool. I like this set. I just wish that it would have like a... 
do they even have different pictures on the cards? I'm not sure if they do. They kind of look exactly the same. It'd be cool if they had an actual, um, I don't know, picture with the background intact of uh, wherever he, he hit that home run. And since they're all in the 680s, is it just the home runs that he hit in 2004? There's Jody Garrett, Johnny Peralta, and we have an Own the Game insert card of Mark Teixeira. Let's check this one out. Own the Game. So many different parallels. This one is 1 in 12, Own the Game. So many different inserts, I should say. There's Larry Walker in his Cardinals uniform. That just doesn't look right. Um, I guess we saw Walker play for three different teams, the Expos, the Rockies, and the Cardinals, but... I don't know. For some reason, the Cardinals looks the least correct on him. All right, here's our next pack. We got a Juan Uribe, Joe Blanton. There's Raphael for a call. Mike Cameron, his son Daz Cameron, has a rookie card in 2021 Series 2, I believe. There's Jerry Naren. And Anderson Hernandez is the last, well, not the last one. We have Charlton Jimerson. I have no idea who that is. So some of these players... Barely had a cup of coffee and then disappeared. Charleston, Charlton Jimerson. That's a name that I'll quickly forget. I'm sure many of you have already forgotten. All right, our next pack up, we've got Eurebiel, Eurebiel Durasno, Durasso. That's a name that was, has, I've totally forgotten that name, obviously, since I butchered my first attempt at it. He uh, had a couple good years. There's CeCe Sabathia, who's going to be a Hall of Famer at one point. And Rael Cormier is the last one. All right, next pack up for Camille. Let's see what we can find for you in this one. There's Aaron Rowan, who was never afraid to run face first into a fence. Kyle Farnsworth. Pedro Feliz had some nice season. Victor Santos. Aaron Harang. For some reason, I never liked Aaron Harang. I can't figure out why. And that's a nice one right there. A nice Mickey Mantle, and I think that's, what is that, a 2004 design Mickey Mantle card right there? Um, pretty nice one right there, Mickey Mantle 2004 design. I love that card. I'm not sure what exactly set that comes from, what insert set it goes to, but another nice one. So two mantles, if you don't include all of the, uh, the home run history mantle cards for Camille, and I'm pretty sure Camille is a, a Yankees fan, so she's got to be happy with that. All right, we've got two stacks left. I think these last two stacks, I'm going to do the old super rip style where I get into it and rip all of them at once. See what we can find in these ones. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow morning starting around 6 a.m.-ish. We have probably about a good two and a half hour break for you tomorrow morning. We'll do a hobby random team break and a jumbo random team break. As we await Target to drop some cards. Now, Target already did drop cards on Tuesday, but some people, I mean, some more in the know folks said it was more of a mini drop where the number of boxes dropped weren't all that much. So some people think that maybe it was just Target that was re-releasing some boxes from orders that they had canceled due to the orders being placed by bots or just people that have placed two orders so we'll see if we get any more. I'm really hoping Series 2 has dropped. Series 2 has not dropped yet at all. So that's what makes me kind of think that we're due for some Series 2. There's A-Rod, League MVP right there. Now let's see what else we have. We'll have to flip these around. I think we have another one of those insert. What was it? Hobby Masters or something like that? There's Supes. It's Own the Game. It's Alex Rodriguez Own the Game. Go ahead and move these cards around. I'm kind of immobile right now. Because I have uh, hurt my back the other day. I herniated my, my disc. So I'm very gingerly standing here. There's an, an Albert Pujols. Uh, Clint Hurdle, former Pirates manager. Jason Bay, former rookie of the year. That's that home run number one card. Again, we've pulled three of that already. Tom Glavin, Hall of Famer right there. And here he is, the big guy, Barry Bonds, who's on the front of the box. Like this card a lot. We check out the stats on the back. We see he's at 708 home runs, just shy of that. Um, you know, the seven, the the big number there was 715 when he's passing Babe Ruth, and I guess the bigger number would be 755 when he passed Hank Aaron. He would eventually pass Aaron in 2007. 
And despite having just crazy numbers, look at these uh, look at these slugging percentages or OPSs all over a thousand, even uh, into the 2006, 2007. Despite being such a great player in terms of production, um, I I'm pretty certain to say that um, Bonds was colluded against by Major League Baseball teams, and nobody wanted to sign him. Because of the cloud of uh, the whole Balco thing going on. So he probably could have maybe played another year or two. Likely would have hit 800 home runs. Craig Biggio right there. Which is going to be a tough record to break. If you think nowadays, all right, what, what player could have a shot at breaking Barry Bond's record of 762 home runs? You got to go really young. It would have to be somebody that broke in the big leagues at age like 18, 19, 20. Somebody like, uh, we got some good ones right now. Uh, Vladdy Jr., Acuna, and Soto and Tatis, all those guys are right now age 22 or 23. So they would have to continuously hit like 30, 40, 50 home runs for the next like 20 years. Now, now a guy like Hank Aaron, he always had good home run numbers. He was he stayed healthy. He got a ton of at-bats. He never hit over 44 in a season, but he was constantly uh, up there in the 30s and, and low 40s. Got to have somebody like that. There's Trevor Hoffman. Could it happen? Records are made to be broken, so we'll see. The one thing about uh, those players that they don't have going for them that Bonds and other players from the 2000s did is um, all the um, banned substances that players took in the 2000s and you know can't use them anymore. So it's going to be a lot tougher to stay in your prime. Players nowadays, their primes will probably end right right around like age 34 or so, 33, 34. Whereas back in the steroid era, it would extend players' primes an additional 10 years. Yeah, I don't know if anybody, anyone's ever going to break Bond's record, but I would say it's more attainable than somebody like Cy Young's career wins record, which is 511. Heck, most pitchers won't even get 511 starts in their entire career. Back around the turn of the century, pitchers would pitch almost every game. They would just throw inning after inning after inning. There was almost no such thing as even a relief pitcher back then. Those pitchers pretty much started what they finished. And Cy Young pitched basically every other game. 511 career wins for Cy Young. And I, d I don't remember how many losses he had, but it was hundreds and hundreds of losses as well. But um, he was one of the all-time greats. Speaking of all-time greats, there's Albert Pujols whose career is winding down. It might be the last year of seeing Albert. Got a Barry Zito gold card. There's the captain, Derek Jeter. Gold glove award. That's a cool one. There's Kerry Wood, who once struck out 20 guys in a game. John Garland. Vicente Padilla. Reminds me of the Padilla Flotilla out there in Philadelphia. Little fan section over in the corner. There's good old Walter Young. He was a power bat. This guy was a big dude. Just uh, never really panned out. I remember seeing some highlights of him hitting long bombs. Josh Beckett, we've got the Mantle home run card for the fourth time. There's A-Rod and Jeter. Jeter trying to, to, I guess, I don't know, maybe do a fist bump there. Supposedly, Jeter and uh, A-Rod didn't really like each other that much. At least, I think I've seen that in a documentary. There's Tim Wakefield just doing a random little pose, throwing the knuckler. Let's see what else we've got. The Declaration of Independence again. Roger Sherman, I guess they had uh, made cards for everybody that signed the Declaration of Independence. Kind of cool if you're a history buff. There's Chipper Jones. He's a Hall of Famer. And this picture was taken at PNC Park. Kind of cool right there. It's like a, an annoying bird outside my window, too. that just won't go away. I hope that's not coming through on the video. Little baby bird that's making a really annoying tweeting sound. Hobby Masters. Manny Ramirez. One in... 18 packs. There's Jeff Mathis and Brandon Watson. And the last card in this stack is Carl Crawford. We've got about maybe 30 cards left for Camille. Let's see what we can find. There's Ryan Friel. JT Snow. There's Bobby Cox, who is a Hall of Famer. Jeff Jenkins used to be a big-time power bat. Um, these top-of-the-class cards are kind of annoying. Scott Hatterberg. Good old Ryan Klesko. David Wright. We've got a rookie card coming up after the Bonds home run card. It's going to be Daryl Rasner. Brian Bullington, former number one pick by the Pirates. And uh, I think it might have been number one in the nation. Just another awful, awful pick. 
He pitched maybe just a handful of games for us, if that, and just disappeared. Nice own the game. Albert Pujols insert card. And the final pack of the video, we got Umberto Cota, Adam Everett, Bernie Williams, who's out in Monument Park. Phil Garner, the fifth time we've pulled that Mickey Mantle card, so they really love printing that. They might as well just throw it in there like those tops of the class cards, just give you one in every pack. Brad Penny, Fausto Carmona, that it's really not even his name. His real name is Roberto Hernandez. That's a fake name. He had a fake name, fake age, fake everything. And the last one is Hong Chi Kuo. So, Camille, thank you very much for your participation. I really appreciate that. Hope you guys enjoyed this toss back to 2006. We didn't find the Alex Gordon cutout or any any sign of an Alex Gordon card in there, unfortunately. But they do exist. You can check them out on eBay. And uh, the actual Alex Gordon card that's all in one piece sells for quite a bit of money. So uh, that'll be it for today. I hope you guys like this video. Please hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. And we'll be back live tomorrow around 6 a.m. with a break as we await the target drop. And when those links go live, we'll let you guys know so you can get hopefully a bunch of Series 2. I expect you all to be able to order 10 blasters of Series 2 based off of the limits that Target has set on other baseball products. And you never know, they might even have those monster boxes for 40 bucks which are equivalent to two and a half blasters which is you know the best deal out there if they have those so we'll keep an eye out for those thank you very much for watching everybody have a great rest of your thursday and i will see you all tomorrow good night everybody